Welcome to The Open Word, an online ministry of Boone Open Bible Church. Hey everybody, Pastor Phil here. I'm pleased to introduce my dad as he brings us gospel illustrations with Doug. And now, here's dad. Well, here we are again. Now we'll try to go on with the first part. We'll bring it up to the second part. And I told you I would put a title up here of what our story and what our message is all about. You knew it would be something like something great, right? Well, we'll cover the rest of what this great stuff is all about. The great divide, that's what we're talking about. The difference between Adam and Jesus. It's the great divide. Well, you see, the Bible makes it clear that it, there's the one thing Adam demonstrates. He was born of the flesh. <clears throat> the flesh is not going to inherit heaven. The, the flesh has this characteristic down throughout. And, 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 and as in Adam, all die. That's a promise. We, we're born with life, but we're all going to die. That's just simply the way it is. But in Christ, we all have eternal life. But we got the great divide. The great divide is, and we, he gives us a chance to decide what we want to do with this. Because on the one side, we have the flesh, and then the other side, we have something even better. Something that you and I really need to consider is we need to have, be born again of the, be born again of the Spirit of God. That changes us completely. On the one hand, if you're born of the flesh and that's what you experience, you get death. If you're born of the Spirit, you get these things. Now, which one would you choose? I think everybody would agree that they'd rather have this eternal life. And guess where that eternal life is going to be? It's going to be with God in heaven. Is that good news? Jesus is going to be there and many of our friends and loved ones. And uh, I have to think we're going to know who they are when we get there. But what a wonderful place it would be. You know, Jesus said he went to prepare a place for us, didn't he? And he said the reason he went to do that, he is coming again. And to take us with him, said, in my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Is that good news? I think that is wonderful. Well, God has got this place. We call it heaven. And I don't think we can begin to comprehend what it's all about. And by the way, the Bible lets us know that it's a narrow gate, a narrow way that leads to heaven. It's a broad way that leads to destruction. This is the easy way and you end up in destruction, which we don't even like to talk about. We don't hear hardly ever about it anymore. But the Bible indicates that if we don't go to heaven to be with the Lord, we end up in this place called, oh, that forbidden word, hell. It's a lake of fire prepared for the devil and his crowd. It wasn't prepared for people, it was prepared for them. But if you don't, if you don't become born again of the Spirit of God and have Christ living in your heart, it's, it's lost. And I did, like I said, I didn't put the word forgiveness up there. But the wonderful thing is through Jesus, he can offer us forgiveness, but he can't do it as a freebie. You see, the Bible said the wages of sin is, I think everybody knows that, it's death. That means eternal separation from God. And that's what is promised to all of us is we're separated from God throughout eternity. And we don't anyone want that to be separated from God. And it says, the wages of sin is death. Well, in Adam, all die. And we know that in Adam, God killed a little lamb or something to make clothing for Adam and Eve. But that don't work for the us. That don't do away with sin. It only covered their nakedness up is all that did. But with us, we need our sins completely forgiven and taken away. And that's where Jesus comes on the scene. Jesus, sinless, God's sinless son, came into this world never ever having tasted sin forbidding himself from taking sin, even though even the Satan himself tempted Jesus to sin, Jesus never sinned. He never disobeyed God in any way. We like to call it sin, but there, I think disobedience is just a good word. You disobey, that is sin. And that's what Adam did. It seemed like so simple and harmless, don't it? 
But you know, God is a righteous judge. When you're driving and you're speeding and you get picked up by a police officer for speeding, and you're only doing two or three miles an hour over, you beg forgiveness and tolerance and, and ask him to have mercy on you. And they usually do. But with God, God's law is absolute. He can't just declare, well, that's all right. You, you, you know, a little lie, that's okay. No, sin is sin in God's eyes and sin separates us from God. But you see, God is so gracious and so wonderful and merciful, he made a way for you and I to receive the punishment only, I guess they would call that vicariously, because they didn't get the punishment. But the punishment was put on Jesus Christ, God's son. And Jesus came into this world for that express purpose, so that he could give his life on that cross for you and I. And indeed, Jesus suffered and bled and died. What a horrible way to die, but he did it just that way. And I have to marvel at the patience of God that he didn't come down and intervene, but he wants us to be in heaven with him someday, so much that he was willing to send his only son into this world and let him shed his blood on that cross. And you know, the judgment against each one of us is this terrible thing called sin. And guess what, you may deny it, but we're all guilty, every one of us have sin. Sin separates us from God. But the Bible said, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. How much sin? It don't just cover it like the hides did of an animal. It takes it away. It washes it away and removes the sin from us as far as the east is from the west. Jesus shed his blood for you and I that we could have that place in glory with him. And it's all that way. There's, there's the plan of God. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now you're gonna be asking, well, how do I go about that? Well, there is a simple word that tells us how you go about that. A very simple word, that. I hope you can read that. It's a thing called faith. By believing that Jesus is God's son, that Jesus never sinned, he lived in this world without sin, and yet they crucified him and he died. But it don't stop there. Because they buried him, put him in a tomb. Three days later, they went down, the tomb was empty. Jesus had come back to life. And for 40 days after that, he was with people. They touched him, they ate with him, all those things. Jesus did all of that thing because he is alive. And that's what he offers us. He offers us his life is everlasting life. And he gives us a choice. Are we gonna believe that? Can we really believe that Jesus is God's son? That what he did on the cross when he died, was that enough? Was that enough for God to be able to blot our sins out, to take them away, that we could be able to spend an eternity with God in glory? Yep, that's enough to all who believe. And I can tell you, I hear testimonies many times of people who have gone, and I didn't list all the drunkenness, the drugs, and all the odd things that people do that are called sin. I didn't mention those because this is where it ends up. But how many people have been caught up in that terrible way of sin, and they come to Jesus and accept him in their hearts and lives, received him, and let him give him his life, and the change that was made was marvelous. They can testify about the great change that had taken place in their life because they were born again to the Spirit of God. Now I want to explain that just a little bit to you. As far as I know, when Jesus was here, he could be only in one place at a time, bodily. He could be in one place at a time. So he couldn't hardly save the whole world, could he? But you see, being he has now sent the Holy Ghost because when he descended to heaven, he said, I, I've got a ghost so I can send the Holy Spirit down here. And the Holy Spirit can be where? Everywhere. That way, the Bible said, if I would receive Jesus Christ into my heart and my life, the Spirit of God would move in me. You see, then that's the change from I'm not just flesh now, I'm also walking in the Spirit, being led of God and taking advantage of what Jesus did for me. He could do the same for you. You could have that same testimony. Whatever your situation is, you may be caught up in the worst habits you can think of or ever would have imagined you would never be there. But if you'll come to Jesus, believe on Him, Invite him to come into your heart and life and then live for him. You've got to be willing to quit sinning, by the way. That's called repent. Then Jesus can form that new life in you, new directions, and new hope. He offers that to you. So you get to decide, is it going to be flesh 
going to be spirit. This comes through Jesus Christ, God's Son. I invite you to receive Jesus into your heart and life, that forgiveness that only He can give, and then that joy that comes with it, the peace that comes with it, the love, the hope, and much more. So, if you would, consider Jesus and invite Him into your heart and life.